if you would ask me what is the most common React query mistake that I see, then it has to be this one. Now, I am a hardcore React query user. There's barely any project that I'm using nowadays that is not using it. But no matter the project size or domain, there is one thing that keeps coming up time and time again. Now, if you know me, then you know my philosophy. I really value developer experience because I believe that a good developer experience directly translates to a great user experience. And while this applies here, what I want to talk to you about today directly impacts your application and especially how the user perceives it. Let's check this out. So to show you this common problem, I made this example. It's just a contact list. So you can see you have your contacts over here and every contact has like the full name a phone number and over the right you have your profile picture you can also delete a contact if you want to nothing crazy and if you would look at it you would think yeah okay that's fine there's actually nothing wrong with this and that's actually where the problem starts because what we're looking at right now is the state where the application actually loaded and that's also mostly the state that developers pay a lot of attention to but let's reload the page and imagine the user just opened the application so I think right now you saw the problem that we're having. We're just having too many loading states. So we have this loading state on the top right for the user. And then we have a loading state for the whole table. And then we have single loading states here for the numbers. And this makes the application flicker a lot and also gives a really bad impression to the user. And while the users may not actively notice this, they do feel that the application feels clunky without even seeing the content of the application, which is too bad. And if you compare this to one of the more established, bigger products that we use daily, like this website, YouTube, that you're watching me on, if you reload the page, you're going to see that there's a beautiful skeleton that seamlessly integrates into the content of the website. So how do you actually achieve this global loading state in React Query? So this is how the code looks like over here. I have pulled up all these three components. And to be honest, they all use the same pattern. We just have a use query. And here I'm passing in the query options. And then we check if the query is pending, then we show a loading spinner. And when the data is there, we show the actual component. And in this case, it's the user image. And the same thing is happening inside these contact numbers that are shown inside the table. And of course, the contact table also looks Pretty much the same. Now, the first idea that comes to mind when you're trying to have a global loading state would be to just go to these components, take these queries and pull them out basically one level higher. So this avatar component is called inside the top bar and the top bar is called inside the contacts page. And this is like the first common ancestor of all these components. And we can have our queries inside of here and then propagate them down and also have a global loading state over here. Now this would work, but to be honest, this does not scale at all because it's just gonna add a lot of code complexity and it goes against one of the core principles of React Query, which is the flexibility that you have in calling a query wherever you are in the component tree. So in this case, what we can use is React's built-in suspense. So out of the box, React Query works really good with suspense and the only thing that you need to do as a developer is to change your queries from use query to use suspense query. And this can also be imported from React Query. And now we don't need to actually worry about if this is pending, we can just delete this part. So let's go ahead and change all these use query to use suspense query. Okay, so I have replaced all the use queries with use suspense query. And one cool side effect that we have here is that the data object that we receive from the query is already defined. So it's not data or undefined. And let's go back to the application and see how it looks like right now. I'm going to reload this. As you can see, it's just a black screen and then we see our application. Now, the only thing that we need to do is to just add a global loading state. And in order to do that, I created a query loading boundary component. And this is using suspense from React. And here we just wrap basically the children with this suspense component. And we also have our fallback. And here you can define exactly what is shown to the user when the application is still loading. And of course, one last step would be to actually use this component. So let's go ahead and wrap your whole application inside this query loading boundary. 
And right now, when we reload the application, you can have your custom loading components. Now, I want to give you one last tip, and I think this is a very crucial thing to know when you're dealing with suspense. So what we did here is to stop the application from loading until we have the data. But what if you have one component that is actually secondary? Now, let's say for a moment that this user profile picture was not shown here in the top bar, but in the footer. So the user will actually not see that it's loading and you don't want that component to hold your whole application from loading. So in this case, you can just use a normal query there. And that way you just opt out of this suspense feature. So this was an example on how to use React with React Query to create modern and beautiful websites. So in the last couple of weeks, I have been working on a bigger project, which is a collection of all the must know React Query patterns. These are the patterns that I'm using on a daily basis. The code for that is already available on my GitHub. I'm going to put the link for it in the description. I have not recorded the video for that yet, and I'm working on that. So if you don't want to miss it, also make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching again and see you in the next video.